How are we doing people? It's Takar here, ready to give uh, a recent travel experience that I had that honestly um, you need to be wary of when you are travelling in and around Russia, which was my most recent trip. Uh, so it was my <laughs> experience with uh, the security services known as the uh, FSB. So um, they run all the internal security in Russia and they act as a sort of, well, in part with the police force and how I ended up getting fined, uh, <laughs> the process of paying this fine and what you guys can do to avoid such a mishap happening to yourselves. So let's just break it down. Um, so whilst in Kaliningrad, um, uh, my girlfriend and I were looking for regions to go visit and uh, we thought, oh, we looked on the map and uh, recommended, oh, Baltisk is a very good place to visit. It's a port city uh, like, um, Svetlogorsk or Zelenogorsk, so uh, we assumed, oh, it'd be nice, um, very nice um, island area called Balti Split and thought, oh, we'll spend the day there, uh, shoot some footage and um, take memories and whatever. So <laughs> we decided to do that for the day. So getting there was pretty straightforward. It's a one hour bus from Kaliningrad all the way to Baltisk. So we get on the bus, uh, pay for our tickets, and we head straight towards Baltisk. So um, for those of you that don't know, um, despite the Soviet Union uh, being dead for over 30 years, uh, Russia and quite a few former Soviet Union uh, countries have, still have to this day, uh, closed regions and closed cities. So these are areas of strategic governmental importance that uh, foreigners aren't allowed to step foot in or visit unless you have a permission slip from the FSB, which obviously I didn't have. But um, anyway, just breaking it down. So when we're traveling through um, the region, you start to notice uh, when you get closer towards Baltisk, there's a lot of um, military installations dotted all over the place that you pass and say, oh, I don't think anything of it. Um, so we come into Baltisk, uh, park up, um, uh, do a bit of shopping, just um, grabbing coffee, grabbing some food uh, to take on our trip. And then, oh, sorry, no, we didn't grab coffee. We were just uh, <laughs> grabbing food and essentials. And then after the um, uh, grabbing essentials, we head towards the um, port terminal to take us to Baltisk um, Split. So whilst we're walking through there, um, there I'm, I'm keeping myself to myself because there's a lot of people in uniform, a lot of um, military installations like barracks and whatever, just uh, people walking around thinking, mm, I think it's best if I um, keep my mouth shut, <laughs> nothing will happen. So we arrive at the uh, port terminal and um, uh, my girlfriend, I let her do all the talking. So. Uh, uh, she's buying tickets, I then use the toilet, I then come out, I <laughs> then uh, walk towards my girlfriend who already bought a ticket and bearing in mind inside this port terminal there's a uh, FSB guard in full military attire and you can tell he's FSB because he's got um, the insignia on his arm and uh, <laughs> that's when we thought yeah let's go get coffee next door and I noticed this guard was taking an interest in us so Went outside, boat was leaving in about, I don't know, five, ten minutes or whatever, plenty of time to go grab a coffee. And um, while well, she's, well, while I'm paying for the coffee and grabbing it, my girlfriend's using the toilet. And then that's when I come outside with both coffees in hand. And that's when, lo and behold, the same guy is waiting for me, the guy in the terminal, full uniform, big smile, everything, uh, <laughs> and uh, introduces himself, uh, Dobro Uda asking for a documentation, uh, doesn't speak a word of English, so thankfully I had my passport on me at the time because it was the same day I picked up my spare bank card, so I put the coffees down really quickly, um, comply, give him my passport, he's checking it out, looking at me, checking it out, checking my migration card, then he quickly takes a photo with his phone and starts making phone calls presumably to the immigration to check my status and everything. 
And then that's when my girlfriend walks out and um, he gets off the phone straight away and starts speaking to her, explaining, oh, are you Russian? And she was like, yes, I'm Russian. So, okay, um, this guy's um, immigration status checks out his visa and everything. The only problem is he doesn't have a um, permission slip to be in this area because it's restricted to foreigners unless you have this permission slip, which you can only get from the FSB themselves. And uh, he explained to us, like, you should have seen the signs when you were coming into the city, explaining uh, no foreigners allowed in or anything, but we didn't see anything at all. And it's only then when I realized, like, well, I'm in big trouble here. But bearing in mind, uh, when I entered Russia at the border, I was never given any heads up. I wasn't given a map or anything of um, the closed regions in Kaliningrad, which I'm going to show you now. As you can see here, they're all marked out in a purple lining where it's a restricted area and you're, as a foreigner, you're not allowed to be there or visit it unless you have a permit, but you can travel through it. So that's not such a big of a problem. So then uh, he explains to us that uh, he has to take, he has to follow protocol and take both of us down to the police station so we can <laughs> uh, sign uh, consent forms about what happened and then process me and uh, uh, administer the fine, which is like a 2000 ruble fine. So not a lot of money at all. So he then explained if there's no one at the police station, uh, <laughs> willing to process the fine or no one available, I will walk both of you to the bus station and make sure you leave Baltis, which I was hoping would happen because it would have been less of a harrowing process. So anyway, uh, <laughs> he then walks both of us to the police station, through the town, uh, we get to the police station, uh, we're in the, um, the main entrance, the lobby area, and um, he's speaking to the police and then he has to fill out paperwork of what happened. He then leaves and leaves both of us uh, inside uh, just waiting for it to be processed. So I'd say like 20 minutes or so goes past and then or may, yeah, 20 plus minutes goes past. Then <laughs> the officer at the desk um, instructs uh, both of us into the holding cell which is where they have the uh, fingerprint and um, the camera equipment. So I basically have my mugshot taken, have my fingerprints taken, um, put on a system uh, so that I actually pay the fine because um, it's, uh, it's a protocol they have to follow. So you, you go on the system, uh, just like being processed if you get arrested for anything at home. But I wasn't arrested, I was just being administered a fine. But obviously they put you on system so you actually pay the fine. And then, after that incident, what happened was, is uh, we were taken back into the uh, lobby area while they were processing through all the paperwork. Bearing in mind, they've got my passport at this point and they're taking photocopies, making phone calls to uh, higher ups, checking status or whatnot and see if uh, anything else has happened. So, so it was only then did it hit me that, well, this is uh, quite serious. And I thought, oh, this is going to affect my immigration status or, I don't know, something might happen to me. Uh, they might take me somewhere else. It's like, um, uh, it will be more than a final, or whatever. And then I'd say we were in the police station for a total of about an hour or so. So after they did all the paperwork, uh, we were then taken into the office of the um, deputy chief of police in uh, Baltisk, where it was a blonde lady. Uh, <laughs> she sat us both down. And then she had her uh, counterpart with her, this big guy, and effectively uh, read through all the paperwork and uh, told us um, what we did, what to do, what to do, how to avoid it, and uh, effectively I had to sign a, a consent form saying I had no idea, and I admit to um, I don't know uh, being in an area restricted area without a permission slip or visitation permit, which is essentially what I got processed for, but I had to write all of it in Russian, which I can't really do in Cyrillic, so uh, my girlfriend had to do everything on the phone and then like follow me and like help me write it, and then sign off paperwork, and uh, that was it. 
Then after signing that paperwork, it all goes on the computer system. And then at this moment, I'm thinking, right, they're going to administer the fine or whatever, making cash card or anything. So I've just got my um, spare bank card, but they said, oh no, um, you have to um, get, get a piece of paper printed off with a QR code on it. And then you have to pay, pay it through your banking app or you go to an ATM, scan it and then pay through there because it's the official... Um, system for fines and um, uh, paying utility bills and things like that. It's a governmental portal system. So <laughs> they did that, but we couldn't do it on the day. It was on a Saturday. So they said, oh, the person who administers the fines and processes payment, um, she's not in today. You'll have to come back on Monday. So obviously we had to wait another 24 hours before we could actually like do anything. But they told my girlfriend she has to come and pay the fine because obviously I'm, I'm not going back there for obvious reasons because I don't want to get fined again, being in another restricted area, getting caught by other police officers or whatnot. So the experience overall, um, I mean, for me, it was a bit, um, I was a bit uneasy because obviously I'm in a foreign land uh, with the current situation that's going on and with the passport that I've got, I thought I'd get, um, you know, uh, special treatment, but not the good kind of special treatment. But no, um, everyone was pretty professional. I mean, they weren't um, being uh, rude or anything. They were just doing their jobs at the end of the day. And um, it was when they laid it down to me before we left that... Um, they actually gave us an uh, information pamphlet of where to visit in Kaliningrad and where not to visit in Kaliningrad and told us like you can travel through restricted areas but you cannot stop, you cannot visit or do anything without the visitation slip. And um, they also explained that um, the fine that I got will not impact my immigration status but, and this is a but, uh, you can't get another fine like this within one year of it being administered. So from October 14th, 2022 to October 14th, 2024, if I get another fine like the one I got in Baltisk, that would result in me having my visa revoked, my <laughs> visa cancelled, and... Um, basically being expelled from the country and banned from entry for i don't know three to five years usually or it depends on how severe the charges but then now we get on to part two of actually trying to pay this fine which is a <laughs> uh, bureaucratic experience in its own right which um, as someone from uh, the West, because uh, if I, I, I got a fine like that, they would have just paid, we would have been able to just pay it on the spot, but uh, clearly not here. So effectively um, what happened was, uh, so Monday rolls around, uh, Monday 16th of October, uh, my girlfriend gets on the bus early morning because the police station opens at 10. She gets there for around, I don't know, uh, 10, 15, 10, 30 or whatever, uh, end up waiting about an hour uh, to see the lady who processes the fines and everything, and then only to be told the <laughs> computer system in the police station is um, uh, it's not working or it's undergoing a big IT systems upgrade or whatever. So, and there's nothing they can do on paper or anything like that. So it all has to go through the system because you have to get this QR code. It's a little QR code on a piece of paper in order to pay the fine through the official payment system. And they were told, her, oh, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. It should be ready by then. So the 17th rolls round, and then same thing again. She gets there very early in the morning, only to be told, and bearing in mind it's an hour each way to get to Baltice by bus, uh, only to be told, yeah, sorry, your computer system's still not working. And then we haven't got a lot of time for this because we're going to be in... Uh, mainland Russia, so we were getting a flight to Moscow in the in, in the coming days, by the end of the week. So they explained to us, um, uh, it's not to worry. So this was the deputy chief of police who um, we saw uh, when signing the consent form and um, writing my name and whatever, uh, and also giving us the list of where to visit and where not to visit, explained to us, uh, oh yeah, not to worry, uh, what I can do is um, exchange, so they exchanged phone numbers and <laughs> basically said, 
the system is going up a it's going through a major upgrade at the moment. So what we're going to do is um, when it is ready, I will contact you and send you a WhatsApp link for payment, and then you pay it through your bank account, and then you have to send a screenshot to me, and then it will go on the official record. And in total, just to pay this one fine, it took eight to nine days to get it processed because we were continually waiting for this lady to come back to us so we could um, just, keep, just kept badgering her to get it through until eventually she sent the payment link, like almost, yeah, like I said, eight, nine days after the initial incident just to pay this um, like 15, 20 pound fine. Ridiculous, but... Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's bureaucracy for you at its worst. And there you go. That was my um, experience with uh, bureaucracy and uh, meeting <laughs> the intelligence services for uh, a little mistake that I committed. So to you, my viewers, what I would advise in hindsight is please do your research before you go visit um, a particular place in Russia. Uh, there's the official government website you can check. Um, there's uh, usually when you enter an area via airport or whatever, if you're a foreigner, they will explain to you um, where you can and where you can't go and um, uh, things like that. I wasn't given any of this because I entered, entered Russia via a land border. So they assumed that I knew, but I didn't. But yeah, I would advise them, um, do your research, um, check in advance and just double check as well because you just never know, you just never ever know. And um, because uh, usually um, you could try and avoid these <laughs> situations like me if only I did my research. Oh, and yeah, one more thing, um, take your passport with you as well or a form of ID, ideally your passport because in case you do get stopped and... Um, you get asked questions by the police, uh, FSB or whatever. Um, you, usually a passport makes it so much simple and they'll leave you alone. But if you don't have your passport, you can be detained for, up for who knows how many hours. And it, it can cause a boatload of problems. But yeah, um, so that was my experience. And I'll leave some uh, links in below to, uh, in <laughs> to give you some... Uh, insight of um, how to check these areas and whatnot and also links to help support this channel so if you want to buy me a coffee i'm more than welcome mine's a flat white with oat milk uh, link to my patreon uh, my paypal and also cash app so whatever you need to do i mean you don't have to but um, your support goes a long way trust me and it really does help and i will see you soon in the next episode